Hey guys, welcome to a new video today. This is my effort on trying to help out the new players that comes to PoE to understand more about the economy in the uh, PoE game, which is an extremely complicated topics. So this will be going through all the things that I think are like the essential stuff that will help you to first of all know what to do and then you know help you on deciding what kind of strategy that you will choose for yourself as well so just a disclaimer if you are the kind of player just just want to follow a strategy from other people and care about the amount of currency per hour then there is a lot of things out there and when the leaks start when people figure stuff uh, figure things out and when me personally if I figure something out then I would probably share it in another video which is specifically a strategy this one is more for the people who want to you know have their own thinking of what's good and what is bad or have a preference of which kind of content that they are going to like to play right so it comes from the very basic stuff so if you are a veteran you know I I mean this is going to be a very long video first of all so I would try to make it as detailed as possible in terms of uh, sections and then you know you see you can see on the list of sections and you can see you know which uh, topic you are not even interested in and you can you know just skip it um, by my estimation this probably take um, I'm not sure maybe the the shortest amount of time for me to complete this this whole thing is probably an hour the longest amount of time by estimation is probably three hours so let's hope it is something that is one hour or less I will try to go as fast as possible so without further ado let's go to the actual topic of the video which is Econ 101 PoE this is specifically dedicated to the Necropolis patch note so it is not gonna you know predict the economy of the necropolis league but it's just based on the content that i know that is available on the necropolis league and also all the changes or the um, changes from the patch note that was available a few days ago so let's get to it so um okay first thing first how to make money here is the list of all the methods that will uh, you know basically help you make money in PoE so the most basic one is to grind uh, it doesn't matter which kind of content you grind right so you can play maps which is the most common one you can do sanctum you can do delve uh, you can do in the maps you can farm uh, legion uh, bestiary essences you know a lot of stuff so basically this is the thing that everyone do and everyone can do right it is the most basic stuff you just play the game and you got loot and that loot will eventually be converted to some certain amount of currency which translate into money in this game next one is doing services this is a little bit more advanced compared to grinding normally it is still a grind because uh, service is basically you helping other people to do something else uh, that is normally difficult and you charge a certain amount of currency for it normally the most common ones are five ways so that uh, you basically carry people with your very strong clear build you clear carry them through five ways encounters which is a legion encounter and they gain a lot of experience from that and that is the way people try to pay money to you know get fast leveling character basically uh, and also the bossing service which you know either help a player get uh, a certain watchstone for example early on if someone plays a build who are not good at boss killing but they can farm very well they have a lot of money maybe they will buy the service to uh, to kill a boss and then they can gain access to uh, the watchstones you know some kind of stuff like that or when you know for the challenges uh, you need to kill a certain amount of bosses specifically ubers to complete all the challenges then people will pay money for that because not everyone is playing a bossing build or not everyone's character is capable of doing the bosses okay next one flipping 
flipping, uh, this one require a certain amount of knowledge. So you need to know the value of a item. Uh, this can be told easily in some cases and not so easy in other cases. For example, if you have seen a unique on the market, let's say the normally all the things that you see are like two divines, but suddenly you see two of them listed for just one divine, then the natural thing is to buy those for one divine and then resell them for two divines. So you get basically a divine profit for each of this unique. That is the easy part, right? So when you search for something, if you see something is, you know, have a couple of uh, items that is, you know, much cheaper than the average, then you can apply the method. Uh, in some other cases, for example, rare items, mm, like decent rare item, mostly, uh, they can be listed for very cheap because uh, mm -hmm. the rare items are harder to price um, compared to uniques. Uniques, they have a set of fixed stat, but rare item, you know, it depends on each person's evaluation on the item. Maybe they got it dropped, maybe the thing is not too good, so they would just sell it for cheap. You see, you think it's good, you know it's good, you know it's a meta item that uh, a lot of people would want for a much higher price, then you buy it, and then you resell it, and you profit from that. So that is flipping. Next one is investing. So investing also is another one that requires knowledge. Uh, but the very simple thing that I can share with you guys here in terms of investment, um, on, for example, in the first couple of days of the week, uh, of the leak uh, when leak starting um, the prices of a uh, divine is much cheaper compared to what it can be later into the leak so your best bet whenever you farmed for example let's say on day two you farmed a bunch of chaos so you found 500 chaos you probably should look at the price of the divine by experience, we can tell that uh, the divine prices normally stabilize around 200 to 220, which is the maximum price for a divine. But early in the league, it can be like 100, 120, 150, something. So if you have money lying around that you do not use for some other purposes, you should keep them as, for example, in this case, divine, not chaos, because chaos value will decrease over time but the divine value will increase over time relatively to each other so that is the most simple and obvious uh, advice i can give to you as a new player that you can apply easily right because if you play a good lick starter build that doesn't require a lot of gear then you can just focus on farming and you know basically keeping the currencies to you know afford another build that is much stronger and much more enjoyable for you later so that is a very nice thing to do. It also applies to all the items in the game, by the way. Uh, but yeah, if we got too deep into it, it will be a very, very long conversation. So just keep that in mind. Investing is good. Uh, this one, crafting, crafting. Now there, is, there are probably two levels of crafting that I would like to, uh, to mention. Maybe three. So the first one is like some kind of mid-tier mid item, which normally is what I kind of specialized in in the last couple of weeks where I first got into crafting. So I tried to craft a bunch of, you know, decent item. For example, if it is a boots, I will craft, uh, I will craft a boots with uh, suppression, movement speed, 30% um, uh, or higher, uh, maximum life, tier 1 or tier 2, and then decent resistance. Not all tier 1. If it is all tier 1, it will be like in the mirror tier of uh, things. Then it will be much, much different. However, there are certain ways for you to craft those kind of items. At least before, the method I used was using Veiled Chaos Orb and Meta Crafting. Uh, now, Veiled Chaos Orb is gone from the game. But there will be ways to always craft very decent items that you can resell for profit. And, you know... Crafting is always very good profit because people want good items and will pay good money for good items. Um, also, crafting is something that can be done that can be done at a very very high level, very end game level in terms of mirror crafting. So there are items that are basically perfect, all tier one modifiers, all very synergistically work well with each other, 
for example, a very high DPS weapon, you know, a lot of people would like to mirror that item because that item is very hard to craft. And, uh, you know, if you want to craft an item like that, you will probably cost more than a mirror itself. So normally what people are crafting mirror gear for, they got the mirror item and then they can open a service for other people who wants to have the same item for their build. They can make, they can take a mirror and then some extra fee. Normally it is quite a lot, like 50 divine, 100 divine, maybe even more, depend on you know what item it is and who is the owner. But they can make a huge amount of profit by crafting mirror items. Not everyone is, you know, um, willing to do the, the mirror crafting because it can take a lot, a lot of money. So yeah, if you are someone who can mirror craft, then you probably would not be watching this video. But if you are new, but someday you want to be in that category, just know that the richest, richest kind of people in PoE are the ones who do the mirror crafting, basically. Right, there's one additional thing that is very simple that new players can easily do for crafting. For example, if you pick up an item on the ground, like for example, let's say a ring or a helmet or a glove that has some life and decent resistances, the best bet is to check it on the crafting bench and see if you can craft additional, uh, uh, normally additional resistance or if you can craft additional attribute on it like strength dexterity strength and dex strength and in in the dexterity whatever you know you see if it has uh, extra space for mods you better craft it on the item normally the most recommended one are crafting more resistant as much resistant as possible on the item because when people search for it on the market normally we search for like maximum life over 70 uh, total resistant over a certain amount so the best bet is to get your item on a state that it has as much stat on it as possible before you sell it if you see it is a very decent item right so that is the advice for me for you know just very basic level of crafting that you can apply immediately if you are a new player right next one is grouping so grouping Basically, it's a different conversation. Normal people in POV play solo, maybe in two people or something, but grouping can yield a lot more reward overall because you can have specialized build that works well with each other. And, you know, in a group, you can also, you know, have a bunch of other utility uh, kind of roles that can help you to liquidate your items drop much faster you can have people you know dividing their time to be online 24 7 to sell all the items all the time on the market always uh, someone holding the item that are online then it can be sold if you are a solo player at the time you are offline or afk you cannot sell the item so you cannot really actually make the money so yeah grouping have some certain benefit to it if you are interested in grouping you would be different from me you would have friends that play the game with you and you you know you will find uh, this kind of information somewhere else not from someone who plays solo like me because I know just a tiny bit on top about grouping. Okay, next one, the king of everything, gambling. So, well, let's say, to be honest, if I'm completely honest, uh, they gambling here, there are methods of gambling in PoE that most likely will, will give you profit. Uh, but uh, it's not recommended because normally it requires a lot of initial wealth in the beginning. You need to have a lot of tickets in order to try to win the lottery, basically. So this can be from like a opening stack decks, try to six linked item, uh, diff card gambling with the harvest crafting bench, uh, double corrupting item you know a lot of stuff that can be very rng based that you can actually do for profit and that can potentially be a lot of profit by the way 
for example I have a viewer who added me on discord where I make um, the juggernaut AFK build and he farmed a lot of stuff and he he likes the build so he tried to do a lot of tempo and then corrupt a bunch of uh, the items that I used on the build uh, try to double corrupt it and after like 20 runs or something I'm not even sure how many runs but he hit a very very big ticket item a very nice like best in slot double corrupt that was sold for like 600 divine or something so those kind of things are very gambly in its nature you can just basically have absolutely nothing from the result but sometimes you can win big just to leave it out there because I know you know we play games and in game you know currency or money doesn't matter as much as like in real life or anything so at some point or maybe at the end of the league if you don't want to play on standard if you don't care about it you'll probably try to find ways to gamble your stuff away just force up a little bit more fun and then you wait for the next leap right next method mathealing or mathealing uh, this is uh, basically a more advanced type of flipping in my opinion uh, if you don't know who Matho is, uh, he is like the most beautiful man that the POE community has ever seen. And he is not only famous for his gorgeousness, but he is also famous for making a bunch of very good builds that are hipster, that utilize a bunch of uh, underpriced item or, you know, low priced item. But if the item he used is relatively rare, and you know relatively low in terms of supply on the market there can be a chance that people would try to buy those items out because he is a very popular person because he's a very beautiful person uh, and they would try to price fix the item that Matho used so people want to follow Matho's build they will have to buy those items and they will have to pay more money and they can profit from you know the differences in terms of price fixing basically it happens in some cases that are very very extreme uh, lately I don't think it has been too bad but I think maybe Matho will try to avoid using rare items uh, more nowadays but before there are some cases where the items that Matho use are kind of expensive just because he used it right now we get to the bad stuff that I will not recommend anyone to do it exists in the game and it is terrible thing that exists in the game I want to mention it here because I kinda want to also warn new players on this one scamming here can have multiple kind of uh, shape and forms uh, the one that I have experienced myself when I was a very new player like 12 years ago very long time ago right so I got my first exalted or drop which is not a big deal nowadays but before it was kind of the divine right now the divine the divine is kind of the basic big currency current item but before uh, in back in time back in the days it was the exalted so I got my first exalted or, or drop I got very excited I tried to buy a six linked quirin uh, quirin bow um, to play a build, I don't remember exactly the build, but I remember exactly the item that I want to bit to to have. And when I trade for the item, the item is not six linked. It's actually a four linked and a two linked. That looks very very similar to a six linked, just because of how the item work. So be very careful, be very mindful of the items when you trade for it, especially if you are trading for for an item that you know worth a lot of money compared to the amount of money that you are having uh, so yeah that was a horrible horrible experience a personal message to the guy who scammed me like over 10 years ago fuck you if you are watching this fuck you is personal I still remember it till this day and if I ever found you I will kill you okay Next one, price fixing. So this is kind of the bad form of the feeling uh, on the above. But 
this normally doesn't really have anything uh, related to a you know content creator content creator or anything but it's a different form of trying to manipulate the price of a certain item for example it, let's say an apothecary card the divination cards right uh, normally let's say the price is uh, 30 divine at some point lastly it should be like 30 divine so, or something like that by the end I think it is 26 uh, but let's say it is the the actual price is 30 divine when a new player uh, somehow is lucky and got an apothecary car card uh, dropped they search it on the market they can see you know a few uh, or maybe even a lot of uh, result for searching for the price of the item that are like even one divine 10 divine or you know whatever there can be a lot of people trying to list the item for much cheaper than the actual value of the item and they have a live search that will pop up whenever they see a new guy normally a new player who lists a lucky drop item on for the price because they think the lower price is the correct price right and they will try to buy them out and resell them for profit so that is another like shady behavior and I don't really like it it is bad right so uh, yeah just know they exist out there so you can be more careful when you you know trying to get money from the uh, try to buy an item in a game or try to sell an item in a game right so these are all the ways that is related to money making as far as I know in PoE uh, we let's go to you know additional details on the most important thing in PoE and game currently is the atlas skill tree which basically is a skill tree for mapping not for your character you can use any character with the atlas skill tree the same atlas skill tree it affects the content that you do it affects the amount of money that you can make it, it affects the kind of loot that you will get right so i will go quickly through all of these these are the current 30 contents that is available on this particular atlas skill tree this can change from league to league, so this is, uh, please remember, this is only for the 3.24 uh, current league that is coming a little bit more than one day from this video, right? So, uh, for example, last league uh, or and before there was Metamorph, but in this league, Metamorph was completely removed from the Atlas skill tree and maybe later they can re-add metamorph and remove something from this list and they can add like affliction back to here with a different form not just a single keystone for example you know a lot of stuff can happen because the poe continuously get new content into the game and they can go core and they can you know just try to take something out of the game and try to fix it because it's not balanced it's not good or it's too good in some cases so this is the current uh, things that are available in the game. I will try to go through it quickly. So first of all, Necropolis, this is the new content in this league. And it is, I think they are, uh, you know, good, but not everyone will enjoy the kind of uh, micromanagement that it required. But I think it will be very strong because this is heavily, heavily, um, you know tied to crafting and also for the lazy people like me they have a keystone on the skill tree that allow you to basically randomize and get some extra perks for doing randomized necropolis uh, content in the map and so we can always have that kind of uh, thing so the profit from necropolis is either from the benefit beneficial modifiers on the map on the pack of monster designated on the map um, as if you want to know more about it, you should probably watch the content reveal video of uh, GGG. And also, the profit can coming can be coming from crafting. And I think next week you will see a lot of crafting video related to Necropolis. Not only from me, I will definitely go get a lot deep, uh, really deep into crafting with Necropolis because I really like those stuff. But you will get the kind of content that have introduction in crafting, sharing tips and tricks about like cool crafting method with Necropolis from a lot of content creators. So just 
expect that to happen. It will be very beneficial. It will be very profitable. That is Necropolis. That is what I think it will be. Next one is Kirak. So Kirak is uh, basically the map master mission. Uh, he will give you a map mission that basically have a specific um, objective. If you complete it, you will have a specific reward that is uh, already explained in the objective. But that is not the important part. The key rack here, along with the next one, is, which is the maps uh, notes, uh, they are extremely good for map progression. And what is map progression? It is when you start the league, you have zero point in your Atlas skill tree. And by completing each map at least once with a certain requirement, depend on their tier, you will unlock uh, that map on the Atlas. And also you will have an additional point that you can put into on your Atlas skill tree. And Kirak and maps basically try to give you access to more maps. Especially Kirak, you on the Kirak mission, you can actually uh, get, you know, uncompleted maps that maybe is not even linked you to your to your current atlas. And so, uh, yeah, it helps you to complete more maps faster, basically. So this is very good to take them early on in the league. With this current league, because they are having three different. Uh, Atlas skill tree so I will probably recommend you to have your first Atlas skill tree to be dedicated to progression and then you can have actual strategy on your second and your third uh, Atlas skill tree whenever they are available I'm not exactly sure how where and when it will be available but I don't think it will be locked behind something that is very very late into the game so um, yeah I think the first one should be dedicated into map progression I will share with you a tree in a later part of this video as well and uh, for map progression right maps right it basically helps to drop more maps uh, so it's very good for progression and in the end game by the way uh, maps is a very valuable asset so if you know what is the meta meta map that people likes to run then there will be people who buy those kind of maps in bulk uh, which for example you have a whole tab a hundred maps uh, of the same type people would like to buy it and normally it is actually a very good amount of money a very decent amount of income that you can actually sell to other people right so yeah that is maps scarab is something that is very big this league uh, scarab uh, there will be notes on the skill tree that helps you to either increase the chance for you to drop scarab while mapping or sometimes you know increase chance for the scarab, uh, scarab uh, drop to be a certain kind of scarab and the scarab the new scarabs uh, the reworked one looks very very crazy by the way uh, currently the most simple advice I can give to a new player is try to match a bunch of scarabs that uh, share the same content for example if you for example let's say you uh, do expedition uh, let's let's say you do bridge you will probably should use a bunch of bridge scarabs uh, with your maps of course it should be paired with a bunch of bridge uh, passive on the atlas skill tree as well that is normally the very you know, obvious, simple, uh, obvious, optimal way for you to actually abuse uh, or maximize the efficiency of your scarabs and also your atlas to get as much loot as possible. This league, with all these scarabs that are currently revealed already, I think this league's uh, level of loot will be very close to the last league. Very, very close. There are certain combos that looks just absolutely broken okay but that is for a future conversation not uh, right now because nobody have tested it with except for people who are in GG next one <coughs> <coughs> I should not be talking too much right now but you know okay next one is incursion 
incursion is Alva's mission uh, before. And right now, it's no longer a mission, but it has a chance to be appearing in the skill tree. Uh, by the way, in this uh, current Alva skill tree, there any kind of extra content. If you take enough points in the skill tree, you will have a hundred percent chance to be present in the skill tree uh, in in the map that you run. So yeah, incursion here is Alva. It is temple. Uh, basically, you run incursion every 12 incursions rooms that you finish. It will be, you know, combined into one big temple and then you can rerun it again as a whole. And the temple can be valuable itself and the drop from the temple, the exclusive modifiers can sometimes be very valuable. So normally people run incursion for money, they will run for the temple and they will try to make the corruption chamber, which is the one that... Uh, uh, it, I mean the locus of corruption is the name of the corruption chamber tier 3 which allow people to double corrupt an item that is normally the big money when it comes to farming incursion I personally really like incursion and I will be running it on my on the first strategy that I uh, do this league because it is a relatively easy content it can make a relatively stable amount of currency and it's very you know it's very easy and it it can <coughs> sorry it can be a lot of monster that you kill with for a lot of experience uh, if you take like for example in the skill tree there will be a note that makes you have one out of three times all the monster in the incursion will be magic and they will give a lot a lot of experience so it can be very nice for you know early progression leveling Betrayal is a bunch of masters uh, that, you know, group together in a syndicate under Katarina. Um, betrayal, currently this league, Betrayal was uh, reward will mainly be Scarab. But the main thing if you want to farm Betrayal for is not only the Scarab, but also, in my opinion, the new Veiled Ore, which is exclusively dropped from killing Katarina. I believe it's not guaranteed, but it can only be dropped there, which function basically as a very, very powerful crafting um, crafting way, which was tied to Iceling before this league. Currently, it is the Veiled Orb. Just know it is very valuable. If you have a drop, you have a bunch of money. So, yeah, that's, that is Betrayal. It is quite a complicated man content to set up. Uh, if you don't learn about it, then you will probably screw it up some way somehow. But I think this league it will be more straightforward because the reward has been you know level between all the different masters basically. So it should be easier to do betrayal this league. I think if you want to look into it, uh, you know, find out about it, learn about it from there are many sources for it. Best theory. It will add uh, more rare monsters, special rare monsters to your map that have special bestiary modifiers. They can be <coughs> not killed, but captured by the Master Einhar. Uh, and then, <coughs> holy shit, my throat is killing me. Uh, and then you can, you know, re-kill them in the uh, menagerie, which is the bestiary area. And then they will, you know, allow you to have some special crafting options that you can do on a lot of kinds of items. So yeah, best theory. That is uh, basically rare map in in rare monster in maps. Kill them, unlock more crafting. Delve, delve uh, in the map in the Atlas skill tree. All the things that are related to delve are probably around getting the resources to run delve, which are the soul fight. But it is a Pretty standalone content compared to normal mapping. It is a infinite dungeon that you will go deeper, deeper, deeper into the ground, and it will be harder, harder, harder. And of course, more reward will be the reward will be better at the you know high high amount of depth, which is the higher level, the more difficult content. Just try to go as deep as possible in this content and get as much reward as possible. That is basically how it works. Heist. Heist is also another standalone content. You can, you know, farm uh, the resources to enter Heist in map. 
uh, just like Delft, uh, but the different thing from Delft is ties. You can actually buy those resources from other people. For Delft, you cannot buy sulfite for 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 from other people. You have to farm it yourself in map or in you know campaign in any zone. <coughs> but for heist, you can actually buy the coins, uh, the uh, Rogue Harbor coin, uh, the coin to enter the Rogue Harbor, and you also can also buy the uh, blueprint, the um, I forgot the name of it, the contract to run heist, and uh, yeah. That is heist. It has a lot of exclusive reward, some very, very big ticket item, very rare, very powerful item. Uh, so, you know, look it up if you like the playstyle. It's a decently different playstyle from uh, normal mapping in PoE. But if you like it, then give it a shot. I personally do not. Oh, I forgot to press. Jeez. Next one <coughs> Strong Box. One of. <coughs> Holy shit. A strong box is one of the very old content in PoE. It's very simple. It is a box that appears in the map. You click on it, there are a bunch of monsters spawn, you kill them, you gain a bunch of loot, depending on the kind of strong box that you have. Right? So that is very simple. Shrine. There are shrine in the map that normally, by default, buff the monster nearby it. There are always extra packs of monster that is guarding, that is staying around the shrine. If you click on the shrine, the shrine buff then then becomes beneficial to you instead of to the monsters. So that is basically extra monster on the map and then extra power for your character while you're mapping. So shrine, I really like shrine as a very early um, thing to grab to progress early on because uh, in the least star environment, the shrine can actually provide you with a bunch of random powers that will speed up your progression while you're mapping. So I personally really like it. Right? Exile. Exile is also a very old content in the game. Basically, they are unique monster. That is very important because they have uh, some kind of synergy with the new scarabs that is uh, <coughs> available this <coughs> The new scarab that are available this league, um, but I will not go too deep into that. Just know that they are unique monster that looks like an exile, which is our characters, and they use our the skills and, or a version of the skills that looks like some skill that we can use. And you know, when you kill them, they drop a bunch of loots. Very basic. Uh, they can, some of them can be potentially dangerous in some certain map mods. So, you know, if you are in hardcore, watch out for them. Sometimes some exiles can be very dangerous. Ultimatum. Now, Ultimatum is a sort of like a arena survival content. So, there will be a certain arena around, <coughs> around the NPC called the Trial Master. And you will need to survive 10 rounds. With each round, you unlock more reward. Uh, and, you know, you can decide uh, to stop at any point and take all the reward that you have accumulated until that point. So you have a chance to encounter the Trial Master himself and get some specific uh, loot that only can be dropped from him. Uh, most significantly, probably, is the Hate Forge, which is a item that allow you to cast more Vow skill basically because the Vow skill no longer costs so but instead it costs rage uh, but yeah basically that is ultimatum last league it was not very good but this league with some of the scarab that I have seen so far ultimatum ultimatum can potentially be something pretty good uh, with uh, you know the scarab that make a uh, more chance to have inscri inscribe ultimatum you know a lot of stuff that can be potentially very good. This league, just to know, so you know, anything can be possible with the right scarabs applied to it, basically. Next one, ritual. Ritual is uh, there will be normally three to four rituals per map if you have ritual on your map, and ritual are basically like a totem with a certain area around it. If you kill monster in that area you can then click the totem, the ritual totem, to revive them and kill them again. They will give you the points 
uh, to then purchase uh, any kind of item that can be so that are sold by the the, the ritual totem itself. <coughs> right, so that is quite actually quite a simple mechanic. Mon revive the monster, kill, gain points, use the point to buy some items. The items are randomly generated in 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 the ritual. By the way, just click on the totem or there's a button to click on at any point near your skill bar and when you finish the map you can click on it and you will see the list of items that are sold with the ritual next one is beyond so beyond is another mechanic that is quite old into the game uh, beyond basically when you slay monster when you kill monster close to each other there's a chance for you to summon beyond portal and it will summon a bunch of beyond monster that you kill for extra loot basically uh, currently there are the tainted currency which are the exclusive reward that can be dropped from beyond monster and bosses so you know <coughs> that is something special about beyond but basically they are extra monster uh, they can be bosses spawn but there can also be an there 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 is also a note on the skill tree that allow you to you know prevent all the any bosses from spawning in beyond but instead just spawn more monster uh, so it depends on your preference if you want to run beyond so it is very comfortable and very nice uh, content to do because it doesn't require you to stop killing or anything it's just pop out when you kill um, monster randomly and then they pop out and you kill them so that's quite nice Abyss. So Abyss is a very uh, thing that is very very strong. Last league with the Affliction. Uh, this league, I'm not so sure if it is uh, as strong for uh, some reason. Maybe there are scarabs that can aid with the Abyss uh, item drop, but uh, they are basically a let's say a portal that is shaped like a vein on the ground. And they will continuously spawn monsters until for for a duration, and you you have more monsters to, to skill to kill basically. Uh, relatively slow compared to other mechanic in terms of monster spawning. Bridge. So you see a bridge on your map. You walk on it, and it will open a. It will open up. It will expand from that point to a circle around, and there will be monsters from breach, which are normally purple. And then you kill them. You get extra loot, some uh, some you know fragment splinter that can eventually make you a <coughs> that can make you a, a breach stone, which allow you to access the content of the breach lords, and then have exclusive drop from the breaches. Uh, basically. Yeah, the bridge, uh, I think, will be better this league. Also, something that was not very good in the previous couple of leagues. But this league, this looks like there is an insane combo for Scarab, again, with breach. That potentially can shit out a bunch of uh, breach stone every single map, I think. Expedition. Uh, expedition here uh, can be complicated but can be simple um, the, what I normally like to do with this one and what I would recommend uh, new players to do if you don't want to learn a lot about this mechanic is to take the big <coughs> the the big explosion so basically you plant down a bomb on the uh, expedition area and then it will explode and it will summon a bunch of monster you kill them you get exclusive reward to expedition which you can use in gambling with Wenin, crafting with rob you know haggling with uh, uh, who is that guy? Tujin? I don't remember exactly the name uh, but normally I butcher the name as well so yeah a bunch of exclusive reward that can use with the NPC from expedition there's a bunch of them with different purposes and yeah just one thing that you need to keep in mind that this is the only content in the game that sometimes can have a modifiers that makes the monster immune to a certain type of damage and if your character is doing like one type of damage for example let's say you are an ignite build 
and you only deal fire damage then you will have to you know be more mindful when you put down the explosion uh, to avoid you know accidentally trigger some immune to fire mod on the uh, expedition and that will screw up your build entirely you can be you will not be able to kill them just keep that in mind legion now legion you will when you click a legion monolith it will show a large amount of monster nearby that monolith but they are frozen in time not frozen <coughs> damn it not frozen in ice but frozen in time and you would try to break them out by you know basically killing them once you can do you can kill them multiple times this league uh, with the new scarab but before normally you will kill them once and then after a certain amount of time or after you kill all of them they will break you know break free from the frozen from the time frozen thing and will start fighting each other or fighting you and then you know you can kill them for basically loot reward an extra content for legion is uh, with the the emblem the general's emblem so if you are hearing something that is four way five ways they are legion encounter the end game legion encounter where you have a bunch of uh, emblem that you put together in the map device it will put open a new encounter that you have a lot of legion monsters pound and you kill them for a lot of experience is the <coughs> one of the most common service in the game right breach oh i think i thought about uh, 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 yeah breach is on the above uh, okay that is the boo boo let's just ignore that one uh, Harvest. Uh, harvest is uh, you go to a certain harvest zone in the map. It is a no load screen instance. Uh, it comes with a map, and then you will have basically option to fight monster, the harvest monster, and then they will give you the reward, the specific reward uh, that is exclusive to harvest that are the juices what we call them they are red juices blue and uh, yellow juices uh, let me actually think what are they called crystallized uh, fuck I always call them juices um, they are harvest juices okay uh, when it drops you know it uh, because they only drop from harvest. Last leak they can drop from affliction as well. But you know currently this leak I think they can only be dropped from harvest. And they are used <coughs> they are utilized in the harvest crafting bench to unlock harvest craft. Uh, and you know it can be easily traded to other people. It is actually on quite high demand because people want to make very high end items will normally have to go through harvest at some point. And yeah, farming harvest has always been a very good method for making money, regardless of when you are in the league. Torment. So torments are basically ghosts. So they are the monster, the it is actually unique monster that uh, will not attack you, try to attack you by enemy, but they try to run from you uh, normally. And they also, you know, uh, let's say they haunt or they affect the monster that they pass through and sometimes they completely merge with a rare monster or a unique monster and give them a bunch of you know more strength more dangerousness and a little bit more reward as well uh, this can be paired with uh, basically it gives more quantity and rarity I think but it can be paired with a lot of the sources of quantity rarity and you know resulting in the very big potential loot explosion delirium delirium basically is another layer of in your map so if you trigger a mirror of delirium at the beginning of your map then the whole map will be delirious and there will spawn more delirium monster and so you have a lot of extra monster to kill 
and loot and you have extra reward um, you have basically extra delirium reward depend on how much monster you killed in that map and it also opens up a, another content that is the simulacrum which is the end game encounter of the delirium league um, it is a separate kind of content that there are 30 waves with increasing difficulty and increasing reward as well on average and it is one of my favorite content in the game because the encounter zone is very small and I don't want to move around a lot with my character so lastly I make the AFK Juggernaut which allow me to basically stand in one place mostly and then just farm one of, one of the hardest content in the game by the way and you know profit from it so yeah I really like this one uh, people also really like Delirium not all people like Simulacrum but they like Delirium in map because they're extra monster extra loot very nice uh, next one okay let me see real quick here next one Blight Blight is uh, so called the defense the tower defense of POE so basically you try to defense monster that coming is from you know designated path to come to a center point uh, if they reach that point a certain amount of monster reach that point and you will lose the encounter basically you <coughs> you can either use the tower defense which you can build the towers but you can also just because your character is very strong and it can cover a large amount a large area so they can protect the pump which is the thing that you need to protect the pump um, you don't even sometimes need to build tower anyway so sometimes strong minion builds can do that very nicely mine builds can do that very nicely with auto targeting and high damage so you know there is quite a lot of things that can do like really well without even having to do anything with the the, the tower defense thing the loot from Blight can be a lot of things, but the exclusive one are oils. Oils, oils can uh, be used to anoint item, which uh, most importantly is the amulet slot. Anoint allows you to have one additional notable passive on your passive skill tree um, allocated, <coughs> regardless of if it is connected to your skill tree or not. <coughs> Okay. Shit. Uh, one second, please. I need to get some water. My throat is killing me. Maybe that is very short, so I need to cut it out of the video. Let's go, Harbinger. So Harbinger is uh, a little bit annoying, in my opinion, because the Harbinger spawn mobs quite slowly in waves. You kill them, you drop uh, items, and most uh, the, the the most signature reward from the Harbinger are the shard of currencies normally they don't really drop good shards so personally i don't really like this content i have seen people doing strategy around harbinger which with a you know proper setup can be very good but it's just not something for me but you have invulnerable harbinger summoner they will summon a bunch of mobs in like three four ways or something and then you have to kill the monster Right. Next one is Val, and this is Val side area. And so, while you are leveling, you probably see Val side area like the corrupted zones uh, that you can enter, and then you can open a Val vessel at the end to give you Azeria fragment and also Val gems. Right. So that can happen in maps as well. And you have certain modifiers in the Atlas skill tree that can modify the Val zones in a couple of ways. You know, 
I have not been doing the Val side area in the Atlas ever. Maybe maybe it is good, maybe it's bad, but I don't see a lot of people doing it, at least at the moment. Essences. This was a very, very, very popular and easy method for money making for a lot of people. Uh, this league, it was nerfed in the Atlas, but then with the addition of Scarabs, then it is stronger than before, but it's also more difficult than before, basically. So, you know, approach it with, you know, basically be careful when you approach it, because it will not be the same as the previous league. If you are not completely new to PoE, you've seen people or you have done essence farming before, just know that <coughs> it might be harder this league. But, <coughs> in my opinion, it should be still very good. Uh, although there is also another risk that this league, if the Necropolis, which is the league uh, content, is too strong, the crafting from the Necropolis is too strong, then there might not be too much uh, demand in terms of essences. So the price of essences can be lower than it normally is. Uh, but essences was uh, one of the main way for crafting items. Maybe this league it cannot be on the same degree because of Necropolis. I'm not sure about that one, but be cautious. Watch the price of the essences before you actually try to farm the essences. Basically, that is what I'm trying to tell you. And how are you able to watch the price of anything in the game? Well, you go to Poe Ninja, Poe dot Ninja. Literally, you know, what? what poe dot ninja it would help you to track the price of any items in the game uh, it's quite easy to use as well also you can look at people's build uh, in poe ninja very very helpful website website next one next content is exar uh, exar is the searing exar currently uh, this league probably the only thing we care about is the altar of the exar so it can drop the eldritch currency allow you to have Eldritch implicit on your rare items <coughs> on your rare armor items so yeah that is the main thing that we will care about in terms of Exarch this league because Exarch the uber Exarch is removed from the Atlas skill tree is now a different pinnacle level content that we need to access through a different meaning which is the new tier 17 maps Right, so Exarch, the same for Eater. Eater, we just care about the altar here. If you take the keystone to, uh, if you take the altars, the Exarch, um, if you choose the Exarch to watch you do the maps or the Eater, you will see the altars, rel uh, the red or the blue altar, depending on which one you choose, and then they can drop the, you know, respective currency, the respective Eldritch currency for Eater or Exarch. Uh, I think it's still something worth doing in my strategy. I, in my plan start strategy, I still do Exarch, because normally people farm the Eater for you know maybe chances to have a divine shrine or something. But I do Exarch because normally because people always do the Eater, so the Exarch currency are in general more expensive compared to the Eater, so yeah, I choose the more reliable income instead of the Eater, where sometimes you can have big loot, but normally the drop is not as valuable as the Exarch. Right, the last one, but not least, the bosses. So here uh, are, actually there are Guardian bosses here, there are um, the Conqueror Guardian, and there are the conquerors, uh, and there also there is the synthesis map bosses. Those three, I you know basically group them together into the bosses because each of them have only one cluster in the top side of the tree. Um, you know they, they they just basically provide specific bonus into those kind of maps or additional chance to drop those kind of maps, and those maps. I'm not sure if this league they are gonna be any valuable before they are like 30 last league it was like 35 30 uh, 25 30 chaos uh, for one map or for one fragment which is the result from killing the boss to the map 
but this league because the uber content will be accessed through a different way so depend on how good the non ubers are then we'll see if the price of those kind of maps are worth it basically yeah so oof. we have get through a very juicy part of the video now the sanctum this is completely completely isolated from the other part which is the Atlas skill tree this is a complete different content that is you know they have nothing to do with the other thing basically you access it through the forbidden tome which can drop from any zone between six, level 68 to 83 uh, the item level doesn't really mean anything just need to have a forbidden tome basically it's like the key to entrance the forbidden sanctum and then you choose <coughs> a bunch of buff and debuff you know it is like roguelike kind of content uh, choose buff and debuff and then you try to finish the the, the, the sanctum and try to get the reward um, this is a very good content for money making uh, but it's not for everyone uh, that's what I would say and normally it does require a specific kind of build because in this sanctum you don't die but you can lose out the encounter if your health drop to zero it is a different kind of health bar basically so it is made like for hardcore player who don't want to die they have basically no risk in playing this uh, sister maybe that well, you know what? I'm not even sure if that hardcore part is kind of true, but well, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, you access this uh, Forbidden Sanctum by talking to Sister Divinia, which is an NPC that you will meet at Act 10, and she will give you a little quest that will instruct you to get to the Forbidden Sanctum, and then they will uh, she will instruct you with a bunch of basic stuff as well, and then from then on, for the next encounter, you have to either buy a Forbidden Tome or farm one, just random drop, and then you have one, you can run it. The Forbidden Tome is on the... Uh, here, right? And you have it, and you can run Sanctum. Labyrinth. Uh, I added this piece of content in last minute before I record this video because I realized it is actually a very, very viable strategy for leak start because at the leak start environment the demand for you know popular or strong transfigured gem is quite immense uh, or maybe even later into the league there are certain uh, transfigured gem that can be can be very 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 valuable um, so you can re relative you can farm the uh, labyrinth you can just run the merciless one you don't even need to run the the end game one and you have a fair chance to have very nice reward tied to Transfigured Gem or maybe sometimes if you run the Endgame version you can have the uh, with the trial you can have other options that can be very beneficial as well so yeah Labyrinth I just want to uh, talk a little bit about it just so you know that it is something that you can look into if you want to look for something that is relatively easy in terms of power compared to the Endgame mapping that can still make a decent amount of money. You can access it with the uh, statue area here in Act 3 Town, the Sarn Encampment. You look for this one, it is on the stair at the you know round area on the stair and you will see this statue. You click on the door and then it will open like this one. All right? It will show you if you have completed all the trials. The trials are basically it will show you where you find the trials or if it doesn't show you that is you did not get to that area once and so you can you know basically go to BOE wiki or something to find out which one which zone you can find the rest of your trials before you can do the labyrinth that is something that is uh, you need to know if you are a new player basically uh, this is also the place where you ascend your character. So basically, it's when you have, when you unlock your ascendancy class, which is much more powerful than just the basic character of like an archer, a templar, a marauder, which 
You can ascend to different classes like the Deadeye, which is very good for projectile skill, for bow build, uh, the Elementalist, which is very good for Ignite build, for example, so those kind of stuff. They are unlocked through they are unlocked through the Labyrinth. Uh, and the Labyrinth map over here, this one, this is the layout, the average layout of the Labyrinth. So basically, you will go through a bunch of uh, instances until you reach the final point, which is this one here, which is the this is the first phase, second phase, and last phase of the Izaro, which is the boss of the labyrinth. And you kill him, and you finish the encounter, and you get to a reward room, which with a bunch of chests that you can open with the keys you have collected throughout the run and then also some options related to the transfigured gem that you can utilize to basically try to get the good transfigured gem that either you want to use yourself or you can sell them if they are worth a lot of money it is a safe thing to do if you plan to try to run the labyrinth for profit it is safe to do if uh, that you should go to poe.ninja and then check for the prices of the transfigured gem see which one is the one that are currently expensive and then you can just basically if you see them pop up in the options you can choose them and profit from that so yeah that is my recommendation for the labyrinth it is a viable thing to do early on it can make you a certain amount of money relatively safe to do because it technically is content within the campaign right unless it is the end game version by the way so here is just a uh, example of the atlas tree for progression uh, I just want to show you quickly on how it looks like here basically I'm taking all the notes that say chance to drop an adjacent map right uh, and all the key rack and all the map num of the all the map mods are all the maps note that are available here right so yeah this is the basic the things that you want to do you want to have as much chance to have additional maps to run as possible as a, a early progression thing basically uh, another another tips if you can run at Ziri, well, you know, if you can run at Ziri early on, it is not hard content. Uh, if you can run at Ziri, they can drop a bunch of like tier four, five, six, seven maps, really uh, from from the zones. And so, if you run out of map early on, if you are unlucky somehow, you don't have enough map to just keep running, you can go there. Or you can buy maps from Kirak. You can use Kirak missions that you have. Check for the Kirak mission and then see which maps are uncompleted so you can do it and then you have much faster progression in terms of Atlas. Why is it important? Because you have more points unlocked into the, the Atlas skill tree with the more maps that you completed. That means more power from your Atlas skill tree for your you know economy power basically. So yeah, especially this league because we have multiple skill trees. Uh, so if the unlock, um, if the unlock requirement for the second Atlas skill tree is not too hard to do, maybe they require you to do 50 maps before you get it or 100 maps before you get it. Then well, <coughs> I would recommend you to do something like this one. And then on your second Atlas, whenever you unlock it, you have a real strategy. Uh, yeah. Next one, this is going to be my strat, so I just want to talk a little bit about it on how, what is my thought process on making this kind of thing, so you, maybe you can apply it to yourself uh, if you want to make your own strategy, because early on in the league, I have to say that nobody can know for a certain that something will be better than each other, especially with a league like this one, where there's a huge amount of overhaul in terms of endgame. The scarabs are completely new and very, very, very important in terms of uh, trying to maximize your loot from a map. Also, all the contents got 
somewhat change uh, in certain ways. So I just basically, first of all, in this strategy, I take everything that is related to Necropolis, uh, almost everything, except for this keystone. I think it has the is the random craft uh, keystone. I don't like that one. So, yeah. Uh, I take this notable, this this notable, this thing over here, right? This is the notable that makes basically you are lazier and your 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 options for necropolis in map will be random, so you don't have to worry about clicking it or anything, right? So I take that one, I take this one, I take all the stuff that are related to necropolis because I think it will be strong and it's the new thing that I want to try out. So I take everything related to necropolis. And then, because I like incursion for early, hmm, for very early uh, progression, I like incursion as I explained in the previous section. So I want to take everything related to incursion, and that are the two main things that I take. So with two or three main things that you want to take, normally you should have a certain amount of points left on your on your uh, atlas skill tree. Normally it should be three main thing and <coughs> maybe <coughs> two or three, you know, just extra, a little bit extra. Here I have two main necropolis and incursion, which I take everything on the on the uh, atlas skill tree, and then the other thing I take is expedition uh, because I like doing the big explosion expedition, which is this node over here, right? Uh, if you take this one, it will be just a one sing one single big explosion instead of trying to have to map out all the explosion multiple times i don't like doing any of that so i think this is a comfortable uh, thing for me to do so i choose to take this one because it's very close to the the normal skill tree that i have done to take all the necropolis and incursion so expedition is my next choice i have a bunch of uh, the expedition stuff that is very close here i think this is rock if I remember correctly, this is rock because rock is very powerful crafting method for early on in the league. So I want to take it early on. Later, maybe I change it to uh, two gen or uh, maybe even went in for some gambling as well. That depends, right? But early on, at least this is the, the the plan. And then the other two things that I have uh, quite a few very close to the skill tree with the level of points, I take stuff related to shrine and strong boxes right and uh, yeah just uh, relatively simple things that uh, can you know increase the amount of monster that I can kill in a single map and you know boots the experience and the loot so these are the things that I think that are first of all relatively easy and second the, the main thing here is the necropolis thing I, I'm not sure if it's gonna be easy or hard uh, so depend on what it actually feels like then maybe i will change up the strategy but that is for a future conversation where we actually have uh, the actual testing done right but incursion is very safe for me at least i try to start with it uh, with incursion ex expedition for every league and then some shrine some strong box so this is a strategy that i am comfortable with it myself and i think it is it you know some other people might find it the same might feel the same way about this kind of uh, strategy of this kind of content okay so i want to share it and the thought process on how i decided to go for this one right. so yeah we have made it to the end of the video so thank you so much thank you so much for watching and if you like the content please press the like button in uh, for the video and also please subscribe to the channel I am very close to a thousand subscriber, which is a huge, huge milestone for myself. Because, uh, you know, it is the first time where, you know, YouTube can stop uh, playing app on my video for free, basically. Uh, so, yeah, a thousand is like a big milestone for any new content creator, and myself included, and I'm very excited for it. And, you know, I can promise nothing. I'm not sure how good content, how much, uh, how how good my content will be in the future, or you know, 
how valuable it is to my viewers but I can only promise that I will try to give my everything to try to make things as at the best at it at a, as I can uh, so yeah please like and subscribe to the channel it helps me great 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 greatly subscribe and see you in the next video when my throat is much better peace oh by the way uh, I will be streaming on Twitch from Lee Start. Um, I plan to do to streaming earlier, but there are a lot of technical difficulty that I have to overcome. I think I have the resolved all of them. I have tested a, a, a very short stream on Twitch um, recently, and it's gone pretty well. So if you want to join me on Lee Start, I would not be from the exact time of Bleak Star because the, um, currently I am working on the same room as where my wife and kid is sleeping as well at the moment the league is starting it's like in the middle of the night for me where I live so I only can do it like a few hours later so I can start like a few hours late compared to other people but I'm kind of used to it and uh, it's not a big problem to me starting a little bit late. Uh, it kind of is beneficial for the playstyle where I, I like the fact that when I, uh, I start the league, when I'm at level 1, people might already be in maps. So there are a bunch of cheap trash unique that are sold on the market where if I can pick up a single alchemy, for example, I have the chance to buy a very, very nice thing for leveling. So it will be easier for leveling if you start the league a little bit late, like I do. Not uh, too not too far, uh, but you know, those are the nice things that can happen if you somehow, for example, for some reason, have to do it late, uh, like me. Like, I would really like to play from when the league actually start, but unfortunately, I will have to wait a little bit until the morning for me so I can actually start turning on the computer and then, you know, just go ahead and stream and have a great time with this league. I believe, strongly believe in it. And if you want to join me, I will leave the link to my Twitch in the description down below. And again, thanks so much for watching. Thanks, everyone. And see you in the next video. I mean, see you in the next stream. Peace.